Hey everyone, today we are going to have another long video that is going to be filled with lots of valuable content. The only way to escape the rat race is to build a big enough capital that would keep generating income. But it's really difficult to do that, especially when inflation is at a record high. One of the few ways to do that is through side hustles. And that's exactly what we will do in this video. We'll explore 13 side hustles that you can start doing right now. There is going to be a table of content in the description, so you can skip to the parts that you want to learn or come back and rewatch them again. This video is a combination of many of our previous videos. But before we start, here is a little disclaimer. This is not financial advice, and everything that's said in this video is for educational and entertainment purposes. So grab a drink and some snacks and hit the thumbs button and enjoy the video. What are the most profitable businesses you can start right now? Businesses that do not require a lot of capital. Of course, if you have a million dollars in your bank account, you have a lot of options. But what if you don't? What if you have just a few thousand dollars or a few hundred dollars? What should you do? Can you start a profitable business with as little as a few hundred dollars? How much can you earn from such a business? We will answer all of these questions and many more. So give this video a thumbs up and let's start with the first one. Number 1. Digital Marketing Before you turn off this video, please hear me out. I'm going to explain to you how you literally can make millions of dollars by starting a tiny small digital marketing business. Don't worry, I'm not gonna sell you any course. I have friends who actually run such businesses and before writing this script, I've talked to them just to make sure that I'm presenting to you with the most accurate information possible. Here is how it works. What is the one thing that every business in the world wants? Sales. If you can help any business to increase their sales, they're willing to pay. The higher the sales, the more they're willing to pay. And it doesn't matter what business is that. That's why businesses spend a lot of money on marketing, branding, building nice stores to attract customers, and so on. But most, especially small businesses, do not have the resources to have an entire digital marketing team. And here is where you come into the picture. Let's say it's a corner shop that sells glasses. Their clients are the people who live around that place or accidentally bumped into their websites when googling glasses. However, if more people knew about their products, they could double, triple or even grow their sales by over 10 times. Of course, anyone can put ads on Facebook, YouTube or AdSense. But not everyone could put effective ads that turn into sales. And that's what you have to learn to do. It's not easy, it's going to take you some time to master the skill. You might need to spend a few hundred dollars testing different strategies until you learn what works and what doesn't. You can literally go to any business owner and tell him, here is how I am going to increase your sales by 30% for example, but I will take one third of the profits of all the sales that I drive. Any business owner would gladly work with you. To prove that you can put effective ads, you can give them a free trial. Of course, that business owner can learn to do that by him or herself. But when you have an entire business to run, you don't have the time for such things. It's much cheaper to just hire someone who is good at that. It doesn't matter what's going to be the social media of tomorrow. The foundation of this business is going to stay. Number 2. Crypto Businesses The crypto world is filled with scams. I get emails every single day to promote crypto products that look very, very suspicious to say the least. But because I love you and respect you, I would never promote anything that I wouldn't personally use. However, that doesn't mean there is any opportunity in this field. I believe that blockchain is at that stage right now as the internet was after the dot-com crash. 10 years from now, most people will look back and say that I wish I started the business in this field. Once this technology is widely adopted, it will be too late to create something really huge. Even if you started a simple e-commerce website 15 years ago, you could be making millions of dollars easily today. But what kind of businesses you can start with blockchain? Let's take an example of healthcare. One of the biggest problems in the healthcare industry is storing patient information. 
doctors usually need your medical history to be able to diagnose your health accurately, but also patients' health details, identity details, and existence of fake medicines in the supply chain. If you use blockchain to store all that information, no one will have access to the patient's medical history without the permission of the patient. Even if you end up visiting another doctor in a different country, you can give that doctor access to your medical history. Blockchain can also avoid fake drugs in the market, since each drug could be safely tracked once it's stored in blockchain. It will make it easier and faster to trace the origins of that drug, store them safely, reduce the cost, and make the entire system much more effective. There are already a lot of startups in this field, but it's not widely adopted yet. Now is the best time to start a business in this field. Healthcare and financial industry are only two out of many, many industries where blockchain could be used. You do not need a lot of money in the beginning, since most people don't understand how the system works in the first place. Spending some time just to understand how it works will already give you a competitive advantage over others. Number 3. Online Tutoring for the last 20 years, everyone was talking about how worthless are college degrees, but most people didn't care much. But after a global pandemic, no one wants to pay these astronomical tuition fees while getting educated online. Whether we like it or not, the process to move to online education has begun, and this trend is only going to grow this year. But you know what most people don't like about online education? You don't feel the connection with the teacher. That makes the process a little ineffective. I mean, it's great when you are trying to reach a huge number of people, but on a personal level, most people want to feel that personal connection, which is why online tutoring is on the rise. In the past, it was a bit difficult since the tutor had to come to your place, but since online tutoring is getting widely accepted, you can easily make a lot of money as long as you're good in one field. Are you good at math? chemistry, science, there are millions of parents who will pay if you help their kids to learn faster. It's a little difficult to scale this business unless you create a platform or hire other tutors and start offering tutoring services on different subjects, but it's a perfect option if you don't have a lot of resources. Number 4. Start a fitness and wellness blog this is one of the businesses that I personally want to start, but I can't find the time to do so since I'm busy running my other businesses. With the rise of global pandemic, people are paying much bigger attention to their health and turning to Instagram bloggers who talk about fitness and health. I personally invest a lot of my health by working out at least three times a week, making sure that my diet is as healthy as possible and jogging every single morning. Maybe one day I will be making fitness videos on YouTube to share with you how I work out. This industry is growing so fast that even Apple launched dedicated fitness apps. When Apple gets into an industry, it gets serious. You don't have to work out for a few years before you can get into this business. Start your journey of getting into shape and share it with the world. People love following people with whom they can relate. If you end up inspiring others to start working out or taking care of their health, they will forever be grateful and watch everything you post. Then you can monetize this mass audience. Number 5. Trade in Amazon Let me ask you a simple question. What is the purpose of any business? Sales, right? Any business exists to sell a particular product or service. Some companies produce their products while others, like that corner shop beside your house, has a supplier. The job of that shop is to sell. In fact, the job of any business is just to sell. And Amazon is a platform where you can sell pretty much anything you want. In fact, you don't even have to manage your inventory. It's all taken care by Amazon. But how do I know what to sell on Amazon? Have you ever heard of Alibaba? It's like Amazon, but in China. Most of the products are often sold for a fraction of what they usually cost in the United States. You can find there anything from gadgets to accessories to clothes to everything else. Your job is to buy low and sell high. It's not easy because you don't know what is in demand, but after some market research, you can figure that out. That's what every business does. They study the market and try to come up with a product that's in demand. 
it's time consuming. You will have to spend an endless number of hours to find the right product at the right price. That's how people make fortunes with Amazon. It's not easy as it was in the past since every single year the competition gets stronger, but there are still plenty of opportunities. All of the businesses we have discussed are practical. You don't have to be a genius or have millions of dollars to start. But you need the discipline and dedication to push yourself every single day to make it happen. Don't try them all at the same time. You will definitely fail. Choose one of them and give it your best. Even if you have a full-time job, start by spending a few hours after your job. Once you grow the business to the point where it could pay the bills, you can decide to quit your job if you want and further grow the business. Can you make a million dollars in a single year? It's difficult to imagine that kind of money when you are living paycheck to paycheck. But the reality is, that's entirely possible if you just get outside of your comfort zone and try new ideas. So here in this video, I'm going to share with you 5 practical methods that anyone can use to make over a million dollars in a single year. So if you're ready, give this video a thumbs up and let's get started. Number 1. Stock Trading when we talk about investing, you probably imagine how the stock market jumps up and down every single day. Let me tell you a little secret. That is not investing. All this news about how some stocks have risen today and which ones fell has nothing to do with investing. Do you know who cares the most about daily stock market ups and downs? Traders. Day traders don't care about the company they invest in. It doesn't matter whether it's the world's largest corporation or a tiny business in the middle of nowhere that barely exists. The goal is to speculate and bet on the company's stock price. It can rise or fall within a few hours, or in some cases, within a few days. Let's say Airbnb is going to release its financial statements tomorrow. According to your sources, they are going to do better than what investors expect. So, you buy $10,000 worth of Airbnb shares. The next day, Airbnb releases its statements, and you're right. So, Airbnb stock price jumps by 10%, since more people are now interested in investing in Airbnb. Your $10,000 of Airbnb shares now worth $11,000. You sell your stocks, and congrats, you have earned $1,000 in a single day. But stocks of stable companies don't fluctuate much. That's why traders prefer unstable companies like Tesla, startups, or a tiny corporation whose stock can even double overnight. You can start with as little as a few hundred dollars. And if you get good enough at predicting which stocks would rise today, then you can make thousands of dollars if not tens of thousands of dollars a day. But keep in mind that it is speculation. In case if you're wrong, you can end up losing everything. So be careful if you ever get into this field. By the way, here is a little disclaimer. This is not financial advice and everything that's said in this video is for educational purposes. In order to make the best financial decision that suits your own needs, you must conduct your own research and seek the advice of a licensed financial advisor. Number 2. Use debt to invest in real estate. Let me give you a short description of how real estate investors usually build their fortunes. Let's say you have saved $100,000. With $100,000, your options to buy real estate are limited. But here's how you can use debt to turn that $100,000 into a million dollars within a year or maybe two. You find a property in a good neighborhood that costs $250,000, for example. You head to a bank and get a mortgage by making a 20% down payment. Now, you're left with a house that needs renovation, a mortgage, and $50,000. You spend another $25,000 to renovate the house, so your total investment jumps to $75,000. But the value of the house rises as well, let's say to $350,000 since you have renovated the house and turned it from a place that no one wants to live into a place that people are willing to pay to live. You rent it out to cover your mortgage, insurance and other expenses and make sure that it generates some cash flow. You head to your bank again, but this time, refinance your mortgage. Since the value of the house is now $350,000, if you would get an 80% mortgage like you did the first time, you will receive $280,000.
You spend $200,000 of that money to cover your first mortgage and you're left with an extra $80,000. You use that money to get another mortgage, renovate it, rent it out and create a second source of income. You can refinance your second house to get a third mortgage and so on and so forth. Here is the best part. With just $75,000, you can control assets that worth millions of dollars. Depends on how many properties you have bought and you have created multiple streams of income. If you have done your research and bought into areas that are rising in demand, your properties will appreciate in value, which means you will be able to increase the rent, but your mortgage will gradually get smaller as the tenants keep paying them off. That's how most people get rich in real estate. Number 3. Sell a course. You've probably heard this a million times, but believe me, this is one of the best and easiest ways to make a million dollars in the calendar year. All that you need is one skill that you're really good at. If you don't have any, then you have to build one first. But let's say you're a real estate agent. You know everything from how to find a good property to what to pay attention when buying a property, how to close a deal, and so on. The fact is, there are hundreds of thousands of people who want to become a real estate agent. And if your course is going to help them to accelerate that process, then people are willing to pay for it. At the end of the day, that's going to save them a lot of time. Turn your knowledge into a practical skill and let's say sell it for $200. What? $200 for a course? Isn't that insane? Let me ask you this. Are you ready to pay $200 to learn everything about real estate from an experienced real estate agent? A skill that you can turn into a source of income? Let's be honest, that's peanuts if that knowledge is going to earn you tens of thousands of dollars, right? All that's left for you now is to sell 5,000 copies of that course for $200. Boom, you made a million dollars. That's one of the beauties of the internet and 5,000 people learned everything you know about real estate. By the way, here is a question for you. I've spent the last 7 to 8 years actively investing in the stock market. I've made some really great investments, but at the same time I made some bad investments which taught me a lot of great lessons. So now I'm making even better investments. The question is, if I turn everything I have learned from the past 8 years about the stock market into a course, will you pay for it? If yes then how much? I'm really curious to know your opinion. Number 4. Find one good stock In summer 2019, which was not that long ago, a single Tesla stock was worth less than $40, and in less than 2 years, the stock price skyrocketed to over $811. That's a 2000% increase. What that means is that, if you have invested just $1,000 in Tesla a little over a year ago, your $1,000 today would worth over $20,000. Or if you would have saved $50,000 by 2019 and invested your entire $50,000 into Tesla, your net worth would be today over a million dollars. Imagine turning $50,000 into a million dollars in a single year. That sounds like a dream come true. That doesn't mean you should invest in Tesla now because the company already had its astronomical rise and who knows what's going to happen next. But that's not the point. Every single year or every other year, at least one startup emerges and completely revolutionizes an industry or something like that. And if you're able to spot such an opportunity, you will grow your investments by 5 or 10,000% in a matter of a few years. Number 5. Create an app. According to our YouTube analytics, most of you watch our videos from your smartphones. The number of mobile users are growing, and it seems like someday in the future only nerds will be using websites, because everything is turning into an app. You literally need an app for every single thing. Of course, the vast majority of what's earned in this industry is by the major players. However, even small apps can earn up to a few thousand dollars a day or tens of thousands of dollars a month. The top apps easily turn over a hundred thousand dollars a day, which amounts to tens of millions annually. We're not talking about the top apps like Facebook or YouTube because they earn unbelievable amounts of money. 
Of course, building an app is a huge risk. You could be spending six months building an app, but at the end of the day, no one will use it. So it's better to study the market first and deliver something that has the highest chance to succeed. It could be a game like Angry Birds or Bubble Ball that unexpectedly became super popular on the platform. The fact is, if you know how to build apps, you have all the chances to make at least a million dollars in this industry. By the way, if you use the link in the description, you will get two weeks of Skillshare Premium where you can learn how to develop apps. These are just five ideas of how to make a million dollars a year, which are entirely feasible. With some hard work and hopefully some luck, you can make it in under a year. If not, you might need some more time to try and learn. On the 20th of January, Neymar, who is one of the most famous athletes in the world with over 170 million followers on Instagram, tweeted that he had just purchased the picture of this ape. How much do you think he paid for it? $10? $50? Or how about $100? The answer might shock you. If you're not ready for such an answer, please turn off the video because the picture of this ape costs probably more than your house. Neymar paid 160 Ethereums or almost $450,000 for a pink ape outfitted with flashy futuristic glasses. But that's not all. He also bought Ape 5269, which is an ape with lasers coming out of his eyes for 190 Ethereums or $533,000. Even for a celebrity like Neymar Jr., spending a million dollars on two digital arts that you can literally copy and paste is considered a lot. However, a million dollars in the world of NFTs is peanuts. Check out every day, the first 5,000 days. It is a 5,000 art collection of people's artwork which was sold for almost $70 million. Yes, you heard that right, almost $70 million. But the most expensive NFT ever was sold on the 2nd of December 2021 for $91.8 million. So if you're wondering how much money can be made with NFTs, the answer is pretty simple, a lot. Why investors willing to pay so much for these paintings? Why could they potentially worth much more in the future? And how teenagers are making millions of dollars through NFTs? We will answer all of these questions and many more. If you're ready, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe. Paying millions of dollars for some digital art sounds insane, but in the age of the internet, paying so much money for any kind of art is insane. Let's take a look at the most famous piece of art, Mona Lisa. It is believed to be worth more than $850 million, nine times more than the most expensive NFT ever sold. We can debate forever why physical art worth the money while the digital one doesn't, but the fact is, in the age of the internet, we can make a perfect copy of anything, even the Mona Lisa. So that begs the question, if we can create as many copies as we want, why is Mona Lisa still worth $850 million? The answer is simple, scarcity. It was drawn by Da Vinci in 1503. While you can create a copy, the Mona Lisa that was painted by Da Vinci over 500 years ago is only one, and there is not going to be a second one, because first of all, Da Vinci is no longer around. And secondly, you can't claim that your copy of Mona Lisa is 500 years old. In other words, we humans are very irrational creatures and we are ready to overpay to have things that others don't have to show our status in society. That's why some people pay hundreds if not millions of dollars for a Rolex watch that does exactly what any other watch does. Tells the time or pay thousands of dollars for a t-shirt that were only a limited number of them produced. Whether you think that is dumb or not, that's a topic for another video. But that's a fact, that's exactly what NFTs are for. After the French Revolution, Mona Lisa was moved to the Louvre and changed hands multiple times. 
on 21st of August 1911, the painting was stolen and was returned back a few years later. After running dozens of tests, they confirmed that this painting is most probably the one that was drawn by Da Vinci. However, if back in 1503 Da Vinci had turned this painting into an NFT, we would have known every owner of the Mona Lisa since it was created and how it moved hands over the centuries. Of course, NFTs didn't exist back then, but that's the point. NFTs are based on blockchain, and blockchain is a distributed database and stores information electronically in digital format. So the entire network knows that Neymar Jr., for example, is the owner of Ape 5269. You can create a copy and pretend like it's the original, but no one is going to believe you because it is all there in the records and we don't need the middleman to confirm it. The public confirms it. If you're not interested in art, and if these probably don't make much sense to you, but if you are, this is a game changer. We no longer need experts and historians to verify whether this is the Mona Lisa that was drawn by Da Vinci. The moment it's recorded in the blockchain, no one can steal it or create another copy. I mean, they can create a copy, but everyone will know which one is the original and which one is a copy, because it is being tracked by thousands if not millions of computers all across the globe, whenever it changes hands. If your favorite artist designs an art for you, the entire world is going to know that this art was designed for you and it belongs to you and no one can steal it or claim otherwise. But what makes NFTs even more exciting is the metaverse. Metaverse is believed to be Web 3.0. If you want to know what is metaverse and why is it a big deal, then check out our video on metaverse. It's one of my favorite videos on the channel. But in short, in the last two decades, we've been building a virtual identity. And instead of smartphones, we'll be walking with smart glasses where our virtual identities will have an entire world of their own. This is of course an oversimplification, but there in the metaverse, the only way to own things will be through NFTs. That's why they are going to be a big deal. I mean, they are already a big deal. An NFT was sold for over $90 million. Isn't that a big deal already? But the main question is, how do you make money with NFTs? There are essentially three ways to make money with NFTs. The first one is, of course, to create your own collection. You don't necessarily have to be the artist. You can come up with the idea and let someone else paint it for you. I have a friend who is doing exactly that. The question is, why would people buy your NFT? That's where marketing comes into the picture. Your job is to create as much hype as possible around them. If you convince a celebrity to buy one, that will create some buzz and will definitely attract attention. Other times, they keep reselling them among each other to the point where it becomes so expensive that it hits the news. But most people make money with NFTs by flipping. An NFT starts getting attention. You sell it, someone else buys it in the hopes of reselling it for a higher price. Eventually, someone buys it with the exact same hope. At the end of the day, it is overpriced. It's like a ticking bomb. Everyone is just passing it to the other, hoping that it won't explode in their hands. But the fact is, it will explode sooner or later. You can play this game, but you have to know that the moment it explodes, over 90% or probably 99% of all NFTs will become worthless. There are people who are going to make fortunes, but the vast majority will lose. The ones who really make money with NFTs are marketplaces such as OpenSea or LooksRare where NFTs are traded. These people make millions regardless of which NFTs are getting the attention. And once the bubble bursts, they won't lose anything they'll just stop making so much money. They charge around 5% per trade. That is a lot. $5 billion worth of NFTs has been sold on OpenSea alone as of January 2022, which means the platform has earned over $250 million. NFTs probably have a bright future, 
but in the short run, some people will make fortunes, but most people will lose, especially since we're heading into a recession. During recessions, risky industries suffer the most because people simply have less money to spend. That is why it is important to consider the stock market. If you're new to the stock market, check out my course on Skillshare. You can try Skillshare for free using the link in the description. This graph from the Congressional Budget Office illustrates why millennials are financially screwed. It shows how much inflation adjusted GDP per person grew during each generation's 15 years in the workplace, starting at age 18. The GI generation had the highest level of growth at 60%. That's when America as we know it today was formed. Even the Fed was created during that period. They're followed by the boomers and Generation X by a huge difference. However, that's still significantly higher if you compare that to the millennials, us, those who were born between 1981 to 1996. It's supposed to be the other way around, because we live in this technologically advanced society that people just 50 years ago couldn't imagine. We have things like the internet, cryptos, online banks, overnight shipping, YouTube, and a thing called Google that can literally answer any of your questions in a few seconds. In fact, if you take a look at the pre-pandemic employment rate, at the beginning of 2019, millennials became the largest generation in the United States full-time workforce, surpassing Generation X. But yet, 60% of American adults don't even have an extra thousand dollars in case an emergency happens. If you take into account that the student debt has exceeded $1.5 trillion, which makes it $37,584 per student, it becomes crystally clear why millennials are totally screwed, to the point where we can afford nothing. Even if you want to buy a budget car just to be able to drive around, you have to get into debt that will take you many many years to pay off, and you will be lucky if you will be able to pay it off in the first place. Even judging by the comments you guys write where you say that you're working day and night at two jobs and you still can't save a thousand dollars a month. I truly understand your circumstances because I've been in such a position in my life and it took me years to get out. And you know what? Saving money isn't the solution. In fact, saving enough money to retire is a horrible strategy because it will never make you rich. So let's find out why you will never become rich by saving money. What is the ideal strategy for financial freedom and how you can become a millionaire with just $5 a day? Yes, you heard that right, with just $5 a day. So give this video a thumbs up and let's get right into it. The most famous financial advice you probably heard is save as much as you can or save for the rainy day. Unfortunately, this is horrible advice. Every dollar that isn't spent today is a dollar worth less tomorrow. Suppose you do your best and save a million dollars for your retirement. In that case, that million dollars isn't going to worth a million dollars, but rather much less. Especially if we are talking about a long period, such as 20 or 30 years. Have you paid attention to how prices rise every year? Well, over 20 years, for example, that small difference is going to compound and reduce the real value of your money by a third or half. Retiring with a million dollars might seem great today, but 20 or 30 years from now, that's not going to be the case. The Federal Reserve targets the inflation rate of 2 to 3% in the US, so you need to grow your money by at least 2 to 3% to maintain your savings real value. The ideal place seems like the savings account, right? The bank is going to pay you interest for keeping your money in that bank. And on top of that, you can withdraw your money in case of an emergency. But let's take a look at how much interest you can expect from the bank. You're not going to get even close to 1%, especially since the Fed had lowered interest rates last year. Let's assume hypothetically that you can get 1% interest on your savings. The inflation is 2%, you're still losing money every single year. Of course, not as much as if you have kept your money under your mattress, nonetheless, you're still losing money. So, what should you do? The only reason that makes sense to save money is to create an extra source of income. Instead of saving a million dollars, 
how about buying real estate worth a million dollars? Of course, house prices don't rise as much, but they still cope up with inflation at least. The interesting part is that they provide you with a constant passive income of 6, 7 to 8 percent, assuming it's not a mortgage. Since rent prices also rise together with inflation, you don't have to worry about it since your rental income will keep rising as well. So let's try to answer the question of this video. Can you become a millionaire with just $5 a day? At first glance, it seems like a dumb idea. $5 is the price of your Starbucks coffee. Even if you cut your Starbucks latte and make your own coffee at home to save $5 a day, that's $150 a month. Nowhere close to a million dollars. Nor is it going to provide you with a decent retirement. Or is it? Let's do the math. $5 a day is $150 a month or $1,825 a year. According to our YouTube analytics, most of you are between 18 and 35. So assuming you're 24 years old and you plan to retire at 67, if you save $5 for the next 43 years, you will save a total of $77,400. That's not as impressive as many of you thought, right? Especially if you consider that $77,000 will worth a lot less 43 years down the road than today. I guess spending 5 bucks on a Starbucks coffee is a way better option. However, instead of saving that $5 under your mattress, investing it in the S&P 500 for example that grows at an average rate of 10% in the long run through the power of compound interest, it will grow to over a million dollars during the same period. To be specific, $1,066,321.24. That's just with $5 a day. Imagine what you can do with more than $5. So, can you become a millionaire with $5 a day? Theoretically, yes. It's going to take you a long time, but nonetheless, it's possible. I can already smell how some of you are typing down there. What is the point of becoming a millionaire at 67? I want to enjoy my life today. The point is to show you how you can build wealth even with small amounts of money if you invest consistently and plan long term. You can build wealth even if you have your daily Starbucks coffee, travel, buy the new iPhone every single year, as long as you invest a small amount of your income. But if you cut your unnecessary expenses and save more, you are going to do that much sooner. Of course, the fastest way to build wealth is to start a business, invest at least 50% of your income, or spot a great opportunity and jump in. But remember, you have to be ready for that opportunity. What I usually do is invest around $3,000 into the S&P 500 every month, regardless if the market is rising or falling to reap the rewards of compound interest in the long run. But at the same time, I'm growing my businesses and trying to spot the next great opportunity, which I share with my Patreons, by the way. The link to my Patreon is in the description. The problem with most people is that they don't have a clear idea of why they should save. They look at their income, even if they save $1,000 a month, that's $12,000 a year. In 10 years, that's $120,000. In 20 years, that's $240,000. That will last you a few years at best. So before saving any money, do the math and make sure it works for you. If you are 20 years old, for example, and you invest $1,000 a month in the S&P 500, by the time you're 44, your investment will cross a million dollars. You can sell your shares and buy a bunch of properties. That will provide you with rental income every month. Or you can just withdraw a certain percentage of your investment like 5% every year, which would equal to $50,000 a year and pay the bills. And your investment would still be growing since the average rate of return historically have been 10%. I've explained how is that possible in a previous video, which link I will leave in the description.